Ellen and Stephanie are both joining us today along with their attorneys, Darren Kavanaki and Jennifer McGrath. I want to thank you both so much for being here. Darren, I want to ask you off the bat, currently there are both criminal and civil cases right. being brought? Yeah, so uh, there's criminal charges where the district attorney is trying to put him in prison for those three charges that you referenced. We're hopeful that the district attorney is ultimately going to file even more charges based on uh, workup that's being done right now. And then separately, there are civil lawsuits where there are now about 100 women who have come forward filing claims. Uh, Jennifer and I represent uh, more than 50 women against both Dr. Heaps and UCLA. And when did the first reports about Dr. Heaps come out? There was a Title IX investigation, which is UCLA's own internal review, um, which found that Dr. Heaps violated the sexual abuse and sexual harassment policies. Through those interviews, there was a doctor who described the medical board being in Dr. Heaps' office taking photographs between 1997 and 2000. And that was uh, allegedly uh, with respect to similar allegations. So obviously that was many, many years, many before, years before these claims have now become public. Right. So can you explain or any thoughts about the long delay and oh. all the women impacted in that interval? Yeah, UCLA needs to answer um, and explain to the public and the community uh, as to why these complaints went unheeded. We have clients who reported back in 2014, multiple times in 2017, and UCLA uh, did not take any action until the end of 2017. And it seems like there was a financial incentive to do so. UCLA bought his practice in 2014. And there was actually a newspaper article that came out in 2016 about the highest earning employees in the University of California system. And he's on that list as one of the top earning staff. It's primarily athletic folks, coaches, athletic directors, and then a few doctors. And he's one of the top earning doctors. So it, it's not unthinkable that UCLA had a financial incentive to help sweep this under the rug. And frankly, our allegations is that they prioritized money over the health of of women. What are some of the things that Dr. Heaps allegedly did to other women? We allege that there was conduct that was not medically necessary, that in fact it was conduct that was designed to sexually stimulate women, which we know is never part of a gynecological exam and should never be part of it. Um, and that's something that UCLA has acknowledged in the Title IX report, which was recently released with regard to the misconduct alleged by one of our clients, and UCLA acknowledged that that type of behavior, sexually stimulating conduct, is, of course, not acceptable. And Ellen, that's what numerous of these women allege. Ellen and Stephanie, were there chaperones ever in the rooms for these exams? In the past, before the incident, there were. But there came a time where there was no longer chaperones in the room. Which shocked me as well. You look shocked. I was shocked I, I as well. Shocked. I'm <laughs> I just thinking too. that just, you know, male OBGYN, I thought that was now at least well, the any, standard of any care. OBGYN, I would yeah. think. Nita, I mean, this is yeah. so unusual. Yeah, it, it is my preference personally, at, even as a female, to have a chaperone in the room. And honestly, in some clinics where it's very busy, I do have... You know, I do know some of my female colleagues may ask a patient if they feel comfortable proceeding without a chaperone, but you should always leave that up to the patient. But I don't even ask the patient. I just think it's good form to have yep. a chaperone in the room. But a male gynecologist? Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, that's, that's I mean any, male, kind of any male physician, I'm, as a plastic surgeon, I would never... I would never go in and see a woman and examine a woman without... I mean, I don't even do full body skin checks in my office without a medical assistant present. Just, it, it just seems that now that's so much the standard of care. When there were chaperones present, there weren't always. I always, I feel that I was misinformed. They appeared to be more as assistants. They handed him tools. They would input things on the computer. They'd have their back to he and I during the exam. I didn't quite understand their role as a chaperone. I had thought they were just his assistant, and that's why sometimes they were there and sometimes they were not. If he didn't need somebody in the room, he didn't have them.